take my coat off, okay? Whatever you need to do. Whatever makes you comfortable. All right, you're, you're, you're making it harder for me now. I give an A in the experience. My scenario involves a young man by the name of Dennis Willard. He's 21 years old. Um, he's surrounded by a lot of peer pressure. His two older brothers were gang bangers. Every time they watch television, it's violence. When they play their video games, it's uh, Grand Theft Auto. And uh, he lives in a rough neighborhood. He's really a good kid, but but he wants to fit in and be cool with everybody else. So they put the peer pressure on him. He know right from wrong, but he don't want to be looked upon as being a wimp, or being a scary, or being a square. And so uh, uh, he got in trouble because he was in the car with some young men that uh, committed a crime. And he went to jail and he's out. And so because he's out, he comes, his grandmother asked me to talk to him, to, uh, to coach him, to give him some counseling. And so, uh, and so it's my job to try to uh, coach, spiritually coach uh, Dennis Willard. And uh, what I, I found out was uh, number one, uh, when I go uh, talk to him, I want to know, is he capable of thinking about the future? Is he open for learning? Is he capable of making change? Is he willing uh, to let God lead him in the coaching process? Is he afraid to take risks? Is he willing to reconstruct his life if necessary? Uh, the first thing I would say to him, I would try to uh, make him think, and I would let him know that I'm coming to him not to judge him or to act like I'm so holier than thou. But I would let him know, uh, brother, you got a bright future before you. You're only 22 years old. And I will share with him that in my life, I've seen so many young brothers cut out. It is a proven fact between the age of 15 and 27, the African-American male uh, is at high risk. He's public enemy number one. And I would let him know that you don't have to become a statistic. Uh, what I would say to him to get his attention is, I would say to him, when you were born, you look like your parents. But when you die, you will look like the decisions that you made. i say that again. When you were born, you look like your parents. You have the blood of your father, and you have the skin, the uh, material, uh, the flesh mostly of your mother. But when you die, you look like the decisions that you made. I would also say to him, show me your company and I'll show you your future. If you want to know how you're going to be next year, five years from now, 10 years from now, just look around at the company that you have. Show me your company and I'll show you your future. If it's 10 people and nine of them broke, it won't be long before it be ten of broke. Show me your company and I'll show you your future. If you hung around with people who in and out of penitentiary, in and out of jail, in and out of uh, carjackings and doing drugs, uh, eventually uh, you're going to succumb to that. Because if you show me your future, I'll show you, show me your company, I'll show you your future. They have a saying in the penitentiary, if you hang around the barber shop, eventually you get a haircut. Think about that. Hang around the barber shop, 
you eventually get a haircut. So I would set up sessions with him. And these would be the sessions that I would uh, set up with him. In my first session, I would let him know that whatever we talk about is confidential. I would explain to him what coaching is and what it involves. I would uh, let him know the difference between coaching and counseling. Counseling is when you talk about his past. And I would let him know we can't do nothing about your past, but coaching is starting right where you are, the present, and helping you get your future. I would also uh, let him know that uh, uh, what boundaries that we can talk about and what you don't want to, uh, to talk about. And then I would listen. I would listen, I would practice the rule. I would listen attentively. I would uh, listen uh, with my heart and not my ears. I would uh, listen and show interest. I would be slow to speak. Uh, to show him that I respect what he's saying, I would show interest. I would be willing to connect and understand with him. I would have an open mind. Uh, and as he would be talking, I would be processing what he's saying. And I would be praying for the Holy Spirit to reveal to me uh, what the deeper issue is. Um, uh, I would be active. Um, I would be focused. I would absorb what he said. I would listen below the surface. I would listen for insecurities, for self-doubt, for conflict, discouragement. And then I would also try to listen for hope, strength, and what his values are. And then um, I would uh, practice the acronym, what we learn about hope. Uh, H, hope and dreams. E, I would listen for energy and passion. A, attitudes and abilities. And R, I would listen for the routines and his habits. And then um, after I, uh, I did that in the session two, I would meet with him and I would ask him, do he like where he is right now and what can he do to change his, his lifestyle? I would uh, uh, suggest to him that uh, he need to look at more <coughs> more positive role models and um, and I would suggest to him matter of fact I would take him uh, if he would be willing and I would take him around people <coughs> who are doing things positive I would show him something new I, I would show him that uh, that uh, just cause you uh, an African American, you don't have to be the, uh, the stereotype. Uh, pull up your pants. Uh, wet, wet, dress nice. You want to look when people see you. Say, oh, he looks nice. Uh, put on a belt. You don't have to have tattoos all over your your face, and you don't have to smell like weed, and you don't have to have a mouth uh, full of gold teeth. And then I would throw this in. Uh, the worst thing in the world is to have colored contacts on the eyes they can't read and to have an earring in the ear where your own mama can't tell you what to do. And what good is it to have a mouth full of gold teeth and you don't know how to articulate and you don't know the eight parts of speech? And I would say to him, uh, what good is it to have a diamond ring on a finger that can't fill out a job application? or to have $200 tennis shoes on nickel and dime feet. And I would say to him, uh, you don't have to be like everybody else. You're an individual. When God created you and you were born, you came into the world by yourself, and one day when you die, you're going to die by yourself. And, uh, and this can be a turning point for your life right now. And uh, I would walk him through. I would be there. I would let him know he could call me anytime through the night if he's going through something. And I would uh, offer to be a, a friend to him. And I would offer to, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't want to overstep my boundaries, but I would make myself available for whatever he needed me to, uh, to be. And then I would try to show him some positive role models. I think we would, this would take more than a four or five session. And, um, uh, and, and then I try to get him also educated. 
I try to get him in a in a, a trade. Maybe you could take your trade. You ain't got to sell your drugs or uh, pick up your trade. You'd be surprised. Uh, plumbers, I mean, plumbers make good money. Amen. And get your trade. Uh, I, I, you want to earn your money. Uh, fast money don't uh, don't last. Earn your money. And then I would I would tell them all uh, the money you you trying to just get rich quick stuff. I would talk to him about investing and and, and get your Roth IRA and, and and talk to you some financial planners instead of taking your money to the casino. Uh, invest your money wisely and look and, and prepare for your future. And, uh, and I would let him know that, that you can make it. Uh, uh, you, you don't have to be like everybody else. Uh, uh, God has a plan for you. And, uh, and your mother, she already uh, can't do nothing with the other two brothers that are ahead of you. But you can be the one that she could be proud of. You can be the one because you got a young brother behind you. And you need to set the example for your uh, young brother that's coming behind you. So that's what I would what, 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 uh, would do. And then finally, I would, uh, in, in my other session uh, with him, I would, uh, uh, oh, these are the questions I, I would ask him. Uh, when I would talk to him, I would want to know, tell me what excites you. Uh, describe your insecurities. Uh, uh, what would success look like to you? What threatens you? Uh, uh, what could you do to improve your situation? Uh, give me some examples. I would do more listening than I would do talking because God gave us two ears so that we would do more listening than we do talking. And so that's what I would do. But all the while, while I'm listening, I would be praying and meditating for the Holy Spirit to tell me what to say to him. Because there's a line in the Bible that says the Holy Spirit would bring things back to your remembrance. And then there is a scripture that says bad company corrupts good morals. I don't know where it is, but it is in the Bible there. Amen. So now that's that's my scenario. Great. What questions do you guys have for Brother Ricky? Uh, what would you say to the kid? Well, uh, I would say to him, Jesus loved uh, sinners, but he hates sin. I let him know that God is a God of, uh, he's a holy God. He's a God of purity. And what makes him God, he cannot uh, uh, have anything to do with sin. Uh, he sent his son to take the bear of sins, to take the sin, sin away. And I would let him know if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed, passed away. And uh, so that's what I, I would say to him. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, you were talking about, you know, helping him, you know, see, like, you know, get a job, do some things, you know, don't make easy money, you were saying. Um, but how would you guide him to determine what kind of thing he might do? Like, would you give him some kind of a, a assignment to do, or you know, like to determine like what those passions are and uh, that sort of thing? I would ask him, what is he good with? Is he good uh, with his hands? Is he? Uh, do he like working outside? Do he like working inside? Is he good at driving a uh, mechanical uh, out, uh, in the food industry? And then I would use my resources of the people that I know. I would personally call individuals, you know, some of my friends, and I would say, hey, we got a kid here, and we don't want to lose him. Is there any kind of way y'all can give him a job, let him start out something? I'm trying to show him an a, a alternate lifestyle. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Would some of your homework be like him applying for jobs and holding them accountable to that, putting some of that work on him? Very much so. Uh, uh, when he got, got ready to go get the job, I would say, no, wait a minute, you need to cut your hair. Don't go in there with no flip-flops on. Uh, you don't need to go in there smelling like weed. You don't need to go in there uh, using slang. What's up, dog? And this be your little boy. 
No, you need to go in there being uh, malleable, respectful. Yes, sir. Uh, no, ma'am. You need to be cordial. You need to show uh, chivalry. If a lady uh, walk in, open the door for her. You, you know, your attitude alternates your altitude. If you want to go high in life, your attitude can, can make you a great. I'm a, a, how old am I? Oh, no. I'm, I'm 58 years old. And I've never had any trouble with the police because when they have pulled me over, I didn't get out. What you pulling me over for? I ain't clowning and all that. I, 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 y yes, sir. How you doing, officer? The way you greet people, the way you talk can make you or break you. Sometimes this right here can mess you up. It can destroy you. Right. Matter of fact, the Bible said the power of life and death is in your tongue. So it's the way you conduct yourself and the way you are, the way you, the way you, the way you carry yourself. Amen. What advice would you guys have for Brother Ricky? Thinking through his scenario. And... Well, Come on, y'all, I worked hard on this. And you got it down pretty good. <laughs> being careful about, you know, finding those jobs for him to stay, it needs to be mostly on him, uh, because if he doesn't pursue it, then you may not stick with it, that's just, you know, kind of like you talk about with kids, you know, don't buy them their car, make them buy their own car, then they'll appreciate it more, mm -hmm. so I think you'd want to make sure that he's doing the work, you know, it's okay to help him, you know, like, but, um, there's an old proverb that says, give a man a fish today, you have to give him another one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you teach him how to fish, he can make his own living. Yeah. And, and, and you have a certain pride about yourself when you're able to accomplish something mm -hmm. and do something for yourself. I, I don't know about y'all, but I, I feel proud, you know, when I'm able to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. there, there you go. There's a couple of comments I'll make. There's a statement you made at the very beginning of your uh, presentation that stuck out, stuck out to me, and it was uh, something that I've experienced in the past as well, and I think anybody in ministry, especially student ministry, kind of experience this as well. The grandmother, the grandmother asked Brother Ricky to meet with the grandson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you thought about that in your scenario, if that was an intentional uh, inclusion, uh, but the grandmother asked for you to meet with the grandson. Uh, and I would just give a word of caution that uh, along the lines of what Missy's saying is it would be beneficial to make sure that that young man owns his future mm -hmm. uh, and that it's not his grandmother's wishes, although her wishes are meaningful and powerful, but it's more powerful when it's his. Mm -hmm. And one uh, exercise in coaching that you can do to ensure that uh, very transcendent is vision, developing vision, and uh, the, the vision exercises that are in the book uh, are very helpful for that. Uh, the chapter on vision is very helpful for that, helping someone uh, from the beginning see the potential that they have, and then they end up having a desire themselves uh, to continue. So that, that's a good place to come alongside someone. Would, would you be able to refer this uh, client of yours if they were not showing any progress during your sessions? Very much so. Okay. Very much so. If, if, if I got bogged down and couldn't handle it, then I would call... Uh, <laughs> 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 I, would, I would call my instructor and they would say, help me with this here. So, so I would go be the go-between. He would uh, talk to me. <laughs> what, what advice he gave to me, I would use that there to give to Dennis. And I would call his grandmother and say, you need to come down here and straighten this boy out. Yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. go. There you That's go. right. There you go. Bring it, Brian. There you go. There Thank you, go. you, Brother Ricky. We appreciate you, man. I did my best.